Hi, I'm Lady Nade, singer-songwriter from Bristol. During my time as a participant on the English Folk Expo Mentoringship, I have been given the opportunity to develop my business skills and music industry profile. Through the dialogue and support of my mentor, Keith Harris, I now also feel I have the tools to express particular issues and challenges I've faced as a woman of colour. I'll start by trying to express some of these issues in words and short phrases. Imposter syndrome, alienation, a sense of being filtered out, low confidence, class club, gender inequality, musical hierarchies. I have tried to find artists with a background like me on the next level in terms of their career. I have found few women of colour on the next step of the ladder that I can reverse engineer in the folk sector. Seeing is believing and it's so important for artists to seek inspiration and guidance through role models. In Bristol, I felt like I'm the only woman of colour playing folk music. In the past, I have found that I get stereotyped into more typically black music genres like jazz, blues and soul. In reality, I just do what I do. I want to make the music I want and I want to keep my integrity intact. I feel like there's a lack of diversity, a lack of representation. Ultimately, as an artist, I'd rather be making music and not spending energy having to talk about these difficult challenges. I want to be focusing on my music and not stood up on the soapbox, but I just fear that there are very few Keiths and Yolas in the folk music sector in the UK. I want the UK to be proud of our folk music scene and I want us to understand its origins and to be able to say that it's open-minded and welcoming to all class, cultures and creeds. If modern British and North American folk has clustered around particular environments, social groups, social settings, how does this encourage the kind of cultural mix that fed folk music so much in the 1950s to 1970s? I've explained before, I'm keen to climb the next level of my career and I feel there's not enough representation. If other people like me are looking at the folk sector and not seeing it as a place where they belong, how on earth can we encourage them to become more involved? If we want to talk about Black Lives Matter, do we need not look at these issues of lack of diversity in the folk scene? Given everything I've said, is it a question of class, cultural bias, racism, or all of these things? Yola, I've mentioned you so much. You're a massive role model. <laughs> you're a sister, you're a friend. Kushanya, we've met at the AMA UK. Um, you're a Nashville artist and you've toured in the UK. And Ali, you're in Nashville as well. And you're with one of the biggest folk agencies. So you tour a lot in the UK. So I guess my first question is, what's your experience of diversity in the current folk scene? And has anything I've said resonated with you? Who starts first? <laughs> Shall I go? Yeah. I was pointing at the cat. Everyone's pointing at me. <laughs> yes, I'm always opinionated. <laughs> you can depend on me to be opinionated. <laughs> Don't worry, girls. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh, um, well, so, you know, like, I've known you a very long time, Nates. Very long time. And, uh, like, Trying to find the route that you want to go through is the hardest thing. Like, like I was in like what classic rock, wasn't it? And like mixed with, and then I had to kind of force some country onto that, and like that kind of um, then turned into something that would now be um, recognised as Americana, but at the time was alt country, if you will. And uh, it was it was the hardest thing to first try and place. I was told by a unnamed record company executive that no one wanted to hear a black woman sing rock and roll music, let alone anything else in that kind of field. And so in those kinds of environments, like representation becomes the most important thing, because at least I could say, uh, what about skin, hello? and. Uh, and other things if you want to take it back that way. I, I, I was about to say, if you want to roll it back some, how about Sister Rosetta Tharp and 
you know, the inventors, Big Mama Thornton. How about the people that invented all this stuff? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. And then, like, but yeah. we then we talk about kind of the folk tradition that, you know, which in itself is like, starts becoming this concept of perception, you know? And I go to a lot, when I was, certainly when I was at Bristol, I almost exclusively went to folk gigs. That was like 100%. You know, our mutual friend John would put on these lovely folk gigs and we, and they were epic every single week. But of course, it was like one permutation of humanity. And folk is like, you know, it's music of the people, it's music from where you're from. And so in theory, you can have mul multitudes of representations of folk music. You can have like ways that folk music interacts and like, we've definitely certainly over the kind of formulation of folk music had um different cultures influence each other which is indeed why the banjo is over here exactly. <laughs> you know like it's all of these kinds of things that like then start that are unanswered questions and it's those unanswered questions that make people feel like they don't belong in that space like my friend put on that um those shows so i go there and like nine times out of 10, I'd like shuffle in in borderline pajamas with a pint and go and see a lovely show. And I felt very kind of welcome, but it would be very easy if it wasn't my friend that put on the show to feel like, oh, I don't know if this place is for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if when I go there, I'm gonna meet anyone that I know. And so it's, it's those kinds of things that feel like they're the jump off, like they're the genesis of making pe people feel welcome. Um, I'm just luckily endowed with a sense of, uh, white male entitlement that I've just embodied within my person so I can Kool-Aid myself into pretty much any environment <laughs> that I want to be in. And so like, I'm not really like, I always describe myself as genre fluid because I, I'm like, I want that, I'm going for it. And I want this, I'm going for it. Because I love so much music, I don't want to be confined by it. And like, that seems to be almost the only approach that I could see as viable was just like, waltzing in with this kind of like, but everything's mine kind of entitled, like entitlement. And until someone goes, is it? And I go, you can do hip hop, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be greedy, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think what you touched on that's so significant mm -hmm. that we are easily tricked out of remembering yeah. is this whitewashing, right? And this erasure. For, for a record exec to have the absolute embarrassing ignorance mm -hmm. to say to you, oh yeah, no one wants to hear black women sing rock music when black women invented it? Like, yeah. that's crazy. That's just crazy. You know, or I shouldn't say crazy because that's ableist, but that's stupid. You know, yes, it's it's stupid. A, yes, it's stupid. Yeah, stupid. Know, it is. It's <laughs> just, and it's incredible how universal that is, right? And, and up until very recently, it was like that with you know, the banjo itself. I remember being in the UK in my first baby band, which was called Poe Girl, and this gentleman wanting to do a documentary about the banjo, wanting to interview our band. I was the only black woman in the band. And when I started talking about the African roots of the banjo, he said to me in all seriousness, oh no, it's from Appalachia. I mean, this is a man doing a documentary about it. Who's been given money? to make a documentary by, I think, I don't know if it was the BBC or who it was, I mean, I, but it was like, we're out, we're out, we can't do this, we can't talk to you, we can't talk to you because you can't hear us. Sorry, you just you can't hear us. You know? And I can't, I can't uh, lend my voice to this misinformation, you know, no, because, hell no. <laughs> because the banjo is America's African instrument, right? So it's <laughs> like, that's the deal, right? So, Yes. Yeah, whitewashing, erasure, forgetting our history, uh -huh. having our importance and our influence. When we realize, when we take that power back and that self-love, that what Yola is saying, when we have our inner uh, white man self-entitlement <laughs> or whatever, but, but that should, you know, um, and we attribute that kind of confidence and sense of like, I'm meant to be here to whiteness because obviously white supremacy and colonialism and the fact that we haven't recovered from it yet, we're still in it. We're still in the struggle for true equality. Mm -hmm. But, and I think Yola's right. Part of that, the most radical thing we can do is self-love. 
follow our own ears, play what we want to play, and know that we belong belong there or have as much right to to you know follow our muse and our artistry and our ears as anyone else of any creed or color you know mm -hmm. and that's uh, uh, you know yola it's something that you've taught me like to constantly check in like have this these health checks self-love self-love need self -love. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I'm brutal on her about it. Sorry, it's a whole thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> Sonia, you're a, a, you use a, a music in your therapy. Um, what you what um, you know the self love and what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, it, it, with diversity, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I can tie into what Yola and, and Ali have been stating. Just what I, th I think I ran into when I started out. I mean, I came into songwriting in a different way. Um, but what was interesting is what I find interesting, even walking in the music world, is how the the presence of not only a black woman, but a black person with a guitar or a stringed instrument is like baffling to people. <laughs> and so they don't know how to categorize us. And yeah. so... And that's the, that's the problem. They're trying to put us in a category. If you listen to us, you ask us, what music do we do? We will tell you, you know? Um, so don't call me rock. I have been called rock before. I have been called a gospel artist. I've been called a soul artist. And it's one of those, like, I'm just making music. I'm a songwriter. What comes out of, this is the voice I'm born with. But the fact that they, we've been we've been locked into specific categories, so therefore people think we don't belong in in these different worlds, in these different sectors of music. When, if, like you're saying, if you go back to where this music has begun, it comes from the roots of Africa. It comes from the roots of African American culture. It comes from like we shouldn't have to try to fit ourselves in. You shouldn't have to put us in a category, knowing that the bedrock, the foundation, comes from this skin. And yeah. so, like, I, I think that's always been interesting to me is how people want to put a label on it they want to try to categorize it rather than just realizing it's good music you know these are great yes. musicians this is a song that's worth hearing we shouldn't have to put them on the playlist of folk music we shouldn't have to put them on the playlist of americana what is americana we, we shouldn't have to like put them on these in these little sectors so i think when it comes to self-love this is why i had to make coming from the therapeutic side i had to make a, a mission statement for myself and for me to have a mission behind what I do, what I stand for, I don't care anymore about what ca categories people are trying to put me in because I know that I have a mission behind every, every stage that I stand on, every song that I write, every person that I interact with. That is to be a voice and a vessel for those that feel lost, forgotten, silenced, and are hurting. Are you soul? No. I'm a voice and a vessel for those that feel lost, forgotten, and hurting. <laughs> are you folk? No. I'm a voice and a vessel, but I'm going to show up at all the conferences. I'm going to show up at all the festivals because the songs and the music fit the same thing. My mission is the same no matter where exactly. you put me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that centering in mission and self-knowledge. You don't need, none of us needs this external validation that's not what it's and and not to say no but it's community. also not we need community yeah and we, we need that reinforcement of each other but that is so different than the like validate me yeah you know large white corporation or whatever you know it's yeah. like the, having that centering yourself in this is my mission this is what i do you can call it what you want this is what i do i think that's so powerful you know? yeah and isn't that kind of quite funky <laughs> in itself because in the UK anyway, folky was really protesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like really protesty. Like so many old folk songs are just a like a big old finger up to the man, you know? And so it's isn't that bizarre that then you're like you're having to fight to get into the like to be included across genre because you are across genre. Or even when you're not, even when you're actually just really folky, <laughs> like still it being like a, a conversation, you know. Um, and I think um, my experience has definitely been one where, like, I get categorized in, like, my last, my, the record I've put out last year, um, like, there are conversations that I never had. Like, I decided to go hard for, like, roots and country-influenced sounds because I knew they'd be the hardest ones to get. Um, and so I 
I, I, I've identified as a genre fluid and I'm always um, just wanting to mix genres. But in every interview I've done, like we've not talked about like things like they'll go souls assumed <laughs> like like you know and we've had to just push country really hard and because we went for that first it was like okay now you're allowed in because we don't really have any other input <laughs> um, other than your press release as a whole thing like everything just says that you're pushing towards country and but like if i'd started in i don't know jazz or just soul music or like maybe rhythm and blues or something or something more gospel feeling like i wouldn't have had the freedom to explore so that's I, that feels like a possible reason why some people they don't get accepted into spaces like the, as they move through spaces because they've chosen something they've been categorized in that direction and then people don't give them the freedom to to be mobile to move through these spaces and and so i had to be tactical about it because i see loads of racism i see loads of bigotry go on shall i say in a broad sense and and i was like well i'm going to strategize myself out of bigotry and it's worked more importantly in that like things are going great but things are going great specifically because i was saw bigotry ahead of the curve and then had to strategize for it and that's so much energy and time and money of my own that I had to invest to get past those hurdles that my peers, um, um, my white peers didn't have to go through. And so that is going to filter off people. And so when we're looking for diversity, mm -hmm. it's not just this whole um, situation of, um, well, we should be involved because we're doing this music and, or we're not doing, we're doing, things that are kind of mission-based that by their philosophy can be accepted in a multitude of spaces but actually that we're being filtered off from the get-go not just because of trust fund kids and like you know um that whole everyone you're competing against is going at double the speed because they don't have all of these barriers to kind of go over but it's it's that at that very base level um you're you're having to filter yourself. <laughs> you're having to kind of get through the process of finding how you can explain to yourself how, what your authenticity is. You have to deprogram yourself. Um, and then when you do that, then you've got to find a way to get your work into these spaces without having it like squished into a category. And so like, it's like everything that Sean was saying about that concept of being genreified, but from both sides, from that, oh, you know, actually, I just do what I want to do, to, do you know what, actually, I do do this genre, but like, I can't do, I can't do all of the things that I am. I've got to be really strategic about which order I do these things in. So you're not going to get certain album from me, Early Doors, Friends, because you can't because of all the bigotry, okay? Uh, which is, if you want it, you're not getting it. And like, uh, <laughs> and which is ridiculous, but it's real life, you know? That's what it is. You go, okay, so here is it. This is first album. Now, great, cool, I'm a bit freer. I can shake things up now because people are like, oh, you're here. And, you, and, and they start saying the things you say. Oh, you kind of do lots of stuff, don't you? And you're like, finally! <laughs> <laughs> talking about it you know coming off your debut cycle um having been really specific about i'm pushing country i'm going to be accepted in this space and it's going to take work because of how i look yes mm. which is you know i mean and and yeah and the and the the kind of um the, the opportunity cost of that what you're saying yeah. you know of not having as much time to only just devote to the creative process. Yeah. You're having to create your public persona in yeah. this very strategic and draining way. And, and, yeah. and yeah. you well know, because yeah. obviously we're we quarantined together. together. Yeah. <laughs> we're quarantined together. Yeah. Yeah. together. Um, yeah. You know that if it wasn't for the Rona, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. I'd like, you got I, a break. I, 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 got a, I got a yeah. chance to actually do 
like play some music and work on my guitar and work on my songwriting. I feel like I've been out of the songwriting brain for such a long time, but I had to hammer it so hard <laughs> to kind of keep the message just going, you know? And so like, I was exhausted. People go, wow, your skin looks so good. I'm like, look at this, <laughs> look at this rat. <laughs> Look at this rest, friends. <laughs> this is my birthday month. Do I'm do getting baby. older. Do Yay, Seriously, birthday I'm, month. They're about to crack black because of this. <laughs> it's serious. <laughs> We're never going to age. Uh. <laughs> so, so then, on, in in this, yeah. So then, in an ideal world, what would be different? I mean, I totally identify with the genre. Um, with um, having to, with being like pigeonholed and um, uh, or I just, yeah, and, and just not having enough, necessarily having as enough time for my art because I've, I've spoken to you about how it's, you know, my, my, my accent being a Bristolian and being working class and sometimes feeling I'm not being taken seriously and then also being a woman like I've played solo gigs I've booked my shows uh, the promoters pay come up to pay me at the end put me with two male band members and suddenly I'm not no longer in the picture that the, the, the automatic reaction is to go up to the male that's the person in charge and all of these barriers I, I sort of face and I just wonder, yeah, and, and, and I, I, I hear that this is the same, like in an ideal world, what would be different? Hmm. I mean, I, it would be nice sure. if, from my standpoint of just like, I, I really, in an ideal world, people would look harder. They would find other artists of color so that those of us that are showing up as the one or the two on the bill don't feel like we're being exotic we don't feel like we're some sort of exotic thing like we have to it's a lot of pressure to be mm. the only person of color to be the only black woman anywhere actually like on any on any roster to be one of few because you feel like okay i have there is a lot in this i have to posture myself the right way so that i know that hopefully if i do well then whoever's coming after me can come on in but just, mm -hmm. I wish people would, yeah. I would hope that they would do the work. Like, we're out here. Yeah. <laughs> we're out here. We are here. I think, but are you, are you trying to find us? You know? Yeah. And I think and, what you're saying is exactly it. 100%. And it's what I do see that's hopeful and almost comical right now. <laughs> the number of people that I've been knocking on the door, knocking on the window for seven years with, my band Birds of Chicago. I started playing in Our Native Daughters where there's a coalition of four women with Brianna Giddens, Amethyst Kia, Layla McCalla, and I. Um, I started to see it with that group and now even more that we're in a, a an international movement, really, of the Black Lives Matter, which is not just about don't kill us, it's about hear us, celebrate us. all of it, see us, hear us, listen to what we are saying and believe us when we tell you things. You know, I, the number of friends I've, and I'm sure it's the same, for, I, I can't speak for everyone, but I can guess with probably a lot of accuracy that each of us has been told by white friends and family, in my case, in different times, there's no racism anymore. Whilst I'm being called N-word baby at the family reunion, you know, in Saskatoon, no racism. Like, oh, well, great Uncle Arthur, you know how he is. Can't take that personally as he's groping me and calling me the N-word. Like, you know, but there's no racism. There's no bigotry. Like, okay, yes, there is. And now what I find hopeful, which is tragic that it has to come out of chronic lynchings in the country that we're in right now in the U.S., for this conversation to come to a head. And it took a pandemic. It took people being forced to stop, to sit with their discomfort, to go through the grief process, which is what you have to go through to understand and face our white supremacist past and present, and um, and the effects, the, the horrifically damaging to all communities effects of that white supremacy. It took a pandemic and a revolution for people to slow down enough 
and we're in the revolution, it's not finished, right? That's it's ongoing. Um, to slow down enough to even acknowledge that there's a problem on a, on a kind of a, you know, critical mass sort of a way. And I, I do also find it hopeful in as much as it's tragic and as much as it feels like for those of us who have to, who have lived with this our whole lives and had this awareness our whole lives and felt ourselves being shut out of the spaces our whole lives. I mean, what we, I was told by another nameless record and record exec that they didn't, they couldn't sign me, even though they, in my band at the time, Birds of Chicago, they couldn't sign us because they already had a black woman who played banjo. Oh gosh. Right? Can you imagine if they applied that same thinking and paradigm to white men with guitars? Sorry, Neil Young, we already have Bob Dylan. We don't, <laughs> we don't, we don't need to hear what you have to say. I mean, it's, it's, and it's the same thing. So think of all those, you know, other, black women artists who didn't get heard, right? Because they already, well, we've already got Big Mama Thornton. We've already got Sister Rosetta. Who, who didn't get heard? Howard, Sorry, we don't need you. We've got Brittany Howard and she's <laughs> Henry, who's amazing. No, and all of these women I'm referencing, I am not, and I'm not putting that on their shoulders at all. They're doing, yeah. They're doing, the, they are, they are, doing all, the work. all praise, all love. But what, the system, the white, the white supremacist systems around us that that create false scarcity, right? It's like the austerity thing. It's false. It's saying there's only a finite number of people in the world who might want to hear you. And if they're already listening to another black woman, then they don't want to hear you. And that is complete B word. You know, it's it's just complete nonsense. We don't know if this is a swearing. It's complete. Complete. We're not sure. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to swear or not. If that will get, you know, if that will cause problems. I'll break it. I'll break it. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's It's the B word. It's bullshit. I totally. It's nonsense. And this is what, to me, one of the most powerful things that's happened to me, in a way, is my coalition of sisterhood with Yola, um, with with you guys now, you Nate. I'm just meeting with Kashana, with you know, Amit, all my all my beautiful sisters in our native daughters. What I have learned, my greatest sense of agency and strength has come from community mm. with other Black women mm -hmm. and being able to, to these things we don't have to even talk about the challenges <sighs> we know that we each face. We've all even I let me tell you something on the Native Daughters tour. We're all on stage together, right? They can see four different black women, real different, real different voices. After the show, every show, one of us would get mixed up for another one. You know, some audience member would come up to me going, Rhiannon, you are so amazing. I look nothing like Rhiannon Giddens. Layla Cal looks nothing like Rhiannon Giddens. Nobody, you know, but Rhiannon is the, is the most well-known of us, has had the most kind of, um, the biggest platform of us to date. And we, we all became Rhiannon in these white folks' eyes, you know what I mean? It's just like, um, but even with that, there was that sense of here we are together, they can see there's more than one, and we are all writing our own songs and playing all kinds of strings and clarinet, clarinet in my case too, you know, all the nerdy stuff. Banjo, clarinet, you, you know, <laughs> the coolest I'm a super person. nerd. That's what I am. <laughs> That's what if I can hop in on this, though, what's what's am what's amazing is how many stories people are missing because they are limiting who they're allowing in or how many of a race they're mm -hmm. allowing in. Because even in this room right here, this Zoom room, we have four women from completely different backgrounds. We are four black women, but we grew up different. We are from different mm -hmm. countries. Yeah. Lit, like we are all yeah. from different countries, Our child, you know, exactly. America. We got Canada, <laughs> yeah, exactly. America, and like even yeah. if, if you're thinking yeah. about other black women in, in America, it's like you got West Coast, which a, the culture is totally different than the Northeast, which is totally yeah. different than the South. So you're missing out on thir further furthering the tapestry of music, furthering the stories and getting to know a people even different, like even deeper. And it's, yeah. it's one mm -hmm. of those where it took me having, I don't want to say that I've leveled up in a way, but it took me finally, I've been doing this for over 10 years and I'm just now finding black women in this, in, in the scene that I'm like, oh, finally here. Hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and we're few, we're very yeah. few, but it, like you're saying though, Allie, like it's, it's like a, you do the, I see you. 
we I don't have that. to go deep into our history. We are all from different countries and different backgrounds, but I see you, I know you. And there's mm -hmm. this like comic. So if you want to make black women and black men feel comfortable, just put more of us on the roster exactly. together. Mm -hmm. so if you want us yeah. to and this is what it takes. Comfortable, just, yeah. So to I'm, answer the question, what do you want us different? Um, well, hire us. Uh, hire us. <laughs> sign yeah. us. Hire, sign yeah. us. Make art. Um, sign us like to the label. Exactly. <laughs> Pick us up to yeah. publishing because that's what the freaking money is. Yeah. And when you want a co-writer that's black, and you're like, where are they? Uh, this is the sound I want. I want a full roster of melanin of all the different vibes <laughs> I could possibly want. Countries, <laughs> places, regions, yeah. cultures. You name oh, it. Yeah. I want, I want, if this is the country of, oh, you're in the West and there's loads of choice. And like, I'm like, no, there's not. <laughs> this is, <laughs> you've got limited choice. This is backward. Yeah. Okay. And so that's, I, I, if you want everything, then have everything. Don't lie to me that this is the land of opportunity and then there's no choice. There's, you know, that's... And you're, you've been going through this directly right now. Yeah, I've been, writing, I've right? been going, find me some black co-writers because we need to spread this money in other community. I want money for black people. That's what I want. <laughs> and so when I go on tour, they're like, look at this roster of white people. I'm like, cute, but I'm only taking black women for at least the first round. Maybe the second round, I don't know how I feel about it. Depends what I find. But like first round, I'm making a statement. For the love of Jesus, so it's you and Amethyst. And like, <laughs> and like second round, I'm like, I'm, I'm, not I'm just like, <laughs> spin the wheel and all my, yeah. all, all the awesome black people that I, like I went on this mission to find some like killer black artists that I thought were not in our range, like not the people that we already knew. And I was like, okay, so who's it that we like only know loosely that they're not really being included in the you know when you go to the th three black people like if i get if i if, so, if i'm like can't do something i'll be like well they come to you next day and like <laughs> and if it, like you know that whole false scarcity thing of they don't know anyone they haven't looked so exactly. said look harder number one two um once you've done the looking pay us evenly okay so that you're not going okay they're going to be cheaper because i have less respect for them as a entity as a human entity and then once you've kind of done that then as it's maybe what we can do is what i've been trying to do recently which is say oh who else is black on this roster <laughs> who have you got that's black that works in this company who have you got that's black that um is at this event um, I'm not your token. I refuse to be your token, more importantly. And so, yes, if you're looking to book me, you might need to book at least two more black people because otherwise, uh, you know, I'm not really that motivated. You know, you're really going to have to come up with some serious coin because, you know, it, well, you know, you're going to 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 sway me away from that. And then what, you're giving me more power. So then I can go and pass that back onto the community again. So it's like either way. And pay us bit, like a massive yeah. level more. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do all this stuff myself or like keep at exactly our rate that we're asking for, uh, which is something that we've deduced as fair instead of trying to barter us down and also hire more. You know, you're mm -hmm. looking to fill a bill. Don't pretend that we can't do stuff. It's like, what? When did black people stop being able to do music? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And these are the kind of changes. <laughs> it these seems are the insane. And these, it seems it is, it, We're it, good at it. It does. <laughs> and these are the kind of changes that we need to make t for things to get better. And I identify in that sort of the pressure to that sp to be the only spokesperson mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in events. And and we and discussed that that um, the co um, competing for the only slot as well and that doesn't That's that it. doesn't form a sense of community if you're no. uh, if uh, your only opportunity is to compete with your peer for the only slot that's available yes. then it's divide and conquer right exactly. it's a divide and conquer tactic and uh, which is just like it's it's a way of controlling that machine it's going oh you're starting to come together well there's only one slot and so you now you have to punch each other in the face for it and that sense of sisterhood that we do naturally my ad 
it just gets devolved and devolved and devolved. And those it's that are most... Attacked. It is. Yeah. But those that are most conditioned, because you know that we all get conditioned with the supremacist model, and then we fight through our lives to undo that conditioning. For those that are earlier in their process of unconditioning themselves, they can fall foul to that competitive devolution of the sisterhood, which is not... Again, it's like, that's an attack from within, you know? And so it's, again, it's all of these things, but they can, a lot of these things can be dealt with by actually hiring black people on the business side. That so, is so that I don't have to be the person that you go to, to learn about all the black things, you know? Mm -hmm. That it's like, okay, um, I go <laughs> to the record company, they've got black people in the office. So when they're like, is this really weird? Like, it feels like it would really work well for Margot Price, but it kind of makes Yellow look murdery. Like, uh, like uh, you know, all of these kinds of things you can go and they'll go, oh yeah, that is, we need to just like tweak that a little bit and that will help with, you know, like to have those people in the business side, have them in the record executive companies, side. executive yeah. side, yeah. have them high up so that they're going, uh, well, our roster looks a bit pasty. Like, uh, you know, like we need them all, we need black people everywhere we need um those the the people in power to realize that their companies could make more money if they involve people of color it's not a charity it's not exactly. like a, Ooh, it's not a you know i'm like they've got missing talent do you know where i've seen this most i watch a lot of f1 and they just brought fernando alonso out of a time i'm trying to get really specific here but like um lewis is, is like the star and he's man of color and they're like looking around for talent, looking around for talent. He's working real hard to make the paddock wake the frick up. And it's the same thing. They're looking for talent. And the whole thing is that that's a peak meritocracy, apparently. But they've had to bring someone out of retirement because they just can't fill those seats. I'm like, where are the kids that are good enough then? Like, if you're not looking at the whole populace, then you're missing out on talent. That was like, like I always akin things to like performance things, like sport and stuff like that. The reason that the states do so well is because the gene pool's so massive because there's more choice of humans so why china do so well in the olympics and all this kind of stuff because there's so many people if you're just missing on a volume of people then you're missing on a volume of opportunity this is business that's what it is you're not getting the talent and and that's and then you're missing out on money and you're like okay well we can tweak talent into people that are demi talented but you know there's there's money to be made I was just really reinforcing that that is an, it, it, that the audience is there. It's a falsehood to say we can only have so many black artists or particularly black women artists because people don't want to hear us, right? We, in the whole country industry, like country music industry, that's a big, Brandy Carlisle, you know, the high women, those folks, they, that's been kind of their battle that they've championed of people want to hear more women. And it's even more for black women. People want to hear more black women too. Mm -hmm. You know, there is an audience. That's, it's not true that there isn't. The only difference is access. Yeah. That's the only it's thing. It's true. It's That's access. The only difference. Only difference yeah. is access. If you're having to relegate someone who like, you know, whose rich daddy's kind of bought them all the time in the world, you've got enough hurdles as it is. If you're not coming from a background of privilege, um, to start with, let alone like, oh, we can't have two black people on the bill. Another reason to take freaking black people to support you, because you're like, because people want to see black women um, together. People saw the bill with me and I'm this, and they're like, this is killer. And we sold out the tour. And it was the same, <laughs> it's been the same for our native daughters. You know, we, every, right. every show was sold out. Every, and, and that's not happening necessarily for me in with birds or, and now I'm want, beginning, just beginning a solo career as well. Mm -hmm. Who know, you know, that remains to be seen. But it was a remarkable thing to be part of, to compare what happened when four women of color came together. For me, in my career, that's by far the most um, notice anyone has ever taken of anything mm -hmm. I've done, you know? And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? I'm, we're, we're all the same artists we were before we, yeah, you know. Yeah, but there's power in it. But there was power in our union as it's so, been. Another <laughs> answer, what else should we do? Yeah. Let's constantly unify, unify endlessly unify, 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 unify support and, each other, exactly. unify. Exactly. That's what we can do anyway. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that everyone that else can do. That has to happen <laughs> and it is happening. That conversation is happening. We are not, the status quo 
is changing. It is. Mm -hmm. that, that's not a question. It is. Is it happening fast enough? No. Do we still have to keep pushing? Yes. However, it is changing and we have to be able to celebrate these gains and notice how it's the fact that we're having this conversation and that, um, you know, that Shrewsbury Folk Festival banned blackface amongst the Morris dancers. That's a win. You That's know, it's, it's long time coming. It's a win. It's, you yeah. know, and it's baby steps, but we're doing it. And, and it. I think we're picking up momentum. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. I feel it. And I feel it by, and what you said, Kashana, of these conversations that we're all just having more because we have the time. We've all had the time to stop and think and process and decolonize. I mean, I, every day, I, my entire life, you know, my background is uh, I was born in Montreal. I was in foster care in a bigoted French Canadian family. And then I went to live with my very young white mom <coughs> and her extremely abusive American expat husband you know, who was from a part of Southern Indiana that was like a sundown town, you know, where people that looked like me could not stay the night. Those laws were on the books till 1979. You know, that, that doesn't just disappear. So that, even as a child, uh, a mixed heritage child growing up in Canada, I was affected by the civil war in America, right? What, that man was as hateful as he was, thought he bought me, thought he owned me, because of how he was programmed with the white supremacy in this country, the particular brand of white supremacy in this country, in America, where, where we are right now in America. And, um, you know, these things are all connected and the change is connected and the change is global. The change is, it is. not just, it's not just here, it's everywhere. And we are, we are supporting each other. Yola has made a choice as an artist who's broken through to, bring a bunch of other black folks along with her. And yep. she's now at a point where festivals are putting her in the big letters and they're going, can, we, can you do this? And she's looking at their roster or looking at the thing going, wait, where are the black women? Where are they? Where are the other black artists? You want me to come? You, I exactly. And she's, she's able to do this now. She's saying, if you want to hire me, you need to hire some other black folks too. I'd be happy to come play your festival. And so would they, and you're missing out on the talent. And now she's in a position because of this amazing breakout year mm -hmm. to do that. And, and I just think how powerful is that? And if each, and we all have a sphere of influence, right? We all do. And we're all using it. You're using it, Nate, inviting us into this exactly. conversation. You're already empowering yourself and others. You're already doing that. You see yourself at a certain level of your career to someone else. You're their mentor, right? Yeah. And that's and that's the you know that we put we lift each other up we lift each other up we lift each other up we hold each other close we fall we pick each other back up that's what we do mm -hmm. I, know, I, think and that's what we're doing. I think you're <laughs> she's going she's going um, you don't so um okay. this is this is I, like my sister okay this is like my sister we've spent less time but you know we're yeah. sisters, anyway. sisters anyway um yeah. but they have similar lives and so there's she's someone's gonna cry yeah. Thanks, if, <laughs> if, if I can like hop in before I gotta go, yes. um, I know there's something that's been happening in this global movement where um, I'm seeing my reflection in more places now. Like when I open my phone, I'm swiping and I'm seeing my reflection in places. And there's <sighs> something that is physically happening to me. There's been a chemical shift in me and my self-esteem, me and my mental oh. health. I, it's like endorphins or like, I feel worth, I feel like I'm worthy. Yes. And I, if, if the folk, if the folk industry is really wondering how can we uplift a people, if, if we as a people roll through your, your, your newsletters, your website, your playlists that you're putting out and we're seeing our reflection, that does a chemical shift for us. That is like, it is something physical of a physical change we feel and I feel like like we're like we've been saying just make sure that you are reflecting the world that you walk around and if you don't see people that look like you in the world you're walking around it shift the world that you walk around in you know um but I don't know I, I, I really want to just the fact that 
I'm finally seeing a reflection because a conversation is happening and I'm hoping this conversation that is happening here like opens people to think how can we even just make a people feel better and more welcome and physically different and emotionally different and I just want to see more of me yes you know? yeah Amen. Um, I've had to yeah. do that to my Instagram feed. I realized yeah. when I just followed all the things that everyone else followed, I was like, wow, that's a really white feed. That doesn't pump me up. Yeah. And so then I had to actively go into my feed and go, put things into your feed. Put that, feed that, you, that feeds flat. you yeah. so that you see yourself. So you're normalizing yourself in your own eyes. Like the mirror isn't enough. It isn't enough. We, we the artists, are, as, as Black artists, are always having to shift how we sit in a room when we walk into spaces. We mm -hmm. always have to shift ourselves. And it would be nice if everyone else did the same for us. Yeah. We have to of shift, if we have to shift to exist in your world, it would be nice to see that coming back to us, watching you shift so we don't have to shift anymore. It would be nice just to walk into a space and not do the quick check of who's in here. So many things are happening mentally when you walk into, into cool room. Style. So much like calculating who else is in here. Cool. Okay. Was that a safe word? I don't, you know, like just always, yeah. always on and never present. I would love to be more present because I know I'm in a spot and in a space where people are truly thinking about my well being as a human yeah. and as a black woman. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I love All you. of that. Oh, we love you. We love you. I can't wait. So grateful you. for this. It's yeah. such a joy. Yeah, keep going. Love you all. I'll talk to you all. Love you all. Really Bye. blessed. <laughs>